was only seven years when it started. Um, but it affected my entire life. You know, I essentially had my childhood stolen from me. So like as a seven-year-old little boy, I call it my night, the, the nightmare year of my life. It's been very difficult for us as a church to acknowledge. Human dignity, human dignity. During World Youth Day, attended by hundreds of thousands of young people, John Paul II recalled that shortly before the event, he had sent a letter to U.S. bishops. I have written to U.S. bishops about the pain and scandal caused by the sins of some priests. It is necessary to use all possible resources to tackle this evil. When the leader of the Catholic Church wrote that letter to American bishops, the Diocese of Santa Fe had received demands for $50 million in compensation and was about to declare bankruptcy. Back in the mid-80s, a court in Lafayette, Louisiana, ruled the diocese had to compensate a victim after the bishop did not fire an abusive priest. At that time, insurance companies told the American bishops that their policies would not cover claims in these cases. Following the financial crisis of the Diocese of Santa Fe and the Pope's letter, many bishops launched a cleansing operation and began to expel pedophile priests. This had an immediate impact. There is a significant drop-off in the number of cases after 1992, because basically most American bishops learn the lesson, which is that you do not reassign a predator priest. You don't give him another job. You take him out of the field. But other bishops disobeyed the Pope and didn't deal with the problem vigorously. The Catholic Church in the United States and many children are still paying the consequences. And it provoked the most serious crisis in the history of Catholicism in America. There are two recurring elements in the sexual abuse crisis, a priest who abuses children and a bishop who did not immediately remove him from contact with children. On January 6, 2002, the Boston Globe published the story of Father John Geegan, who for 30 years had abused more than 130 children. Boston Cardinal Bernard Law thought the problem could be solved by moving him to a new parish after abuse cases. So John Geegan was transferred to half a dozen parishes. At each new parish, parents complained to the archdiocese that the priest had abused children. Geegan's case triggered a wave of complaints against other American bishops who had also put avoidance of scandal above the safety of children. The Pope summoned all American cardinals to the Vatican to brief him on the sexual abuse scandals. People need to know that there is no place in the priesthood and religious life for those who would harm the young. These words changed history. The bishops would have to remove the rotten apple in the basket before it tainted the rest of the church. After meeting at the Vatican, all the American bishops met in Dallas and signed a document titled Charter for the Protection of Children and Young People. They proposed that it should be mandatory for the bishop to report abuse to the authorities and to expel the priest after the first offense against a minor. For these to become mandatory rules for the bishops, authorization from the Vatican was needed. Four American bishops traveled to Rome to negotiate a formula that would allow them to immediately remove guilty priests. Some senior Vatican officials thought that uh, these aggressive policies, the so-called one strike and you're out policy, uh, is what the church needed. Uh, others were quite opposed to it because they felt it's a betrayal of the church's long tradition of canon law, which does not use one size fits all penalties. Only one cardinal fully supported the determination of the four American bishops, the prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, 
Joseph Ratzinger. His support was critical in getting what they proposed. 